Hello, K5 class. This is Miss Susan, and I'm coming to you from YouTube. Um, so I hope you guys are excited to still do some learning um, at your house, at your home. Um, today we are going to be doing lesson 115. Um, if your parents would like to go ahead and gather those materials, um, that will be letters and sounds, page 131 and 132. And then we will be doing our number skills, page 94. We will also do our numbers writing tablet, page 43. And then we'll be doing our reading with our blend book. That'll be your red book with the little ladder on the front. And you'll be reading page 40 and 41 out of that. Then you will follow up and do the I Do Read, book 2, page 10 and 11. And then you will do I Do Read, book 3, page 7 through 9. So, so uh, first we're going to begin with our Bible, just like we do at school. So our scriptures for these next few weeks will be Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And then our next one is Isaiah 55, 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. So today in our Bible story, we are going to be learning about Jesus and the children and then the lost lamb. So Jesus, um, everywhere he went, there was Amazing crowds of people that would gather around him. He was very popular. People loved to come and see. They wanted to see his miracles that he would perform. Um, they just loved the spirit of God that was upon him. So these people in the city of Nazareth, they found out that Jesus, this great prophet, was coming to see them. So all the mothers, they grabbed their children and they went to go see Jesus. So they thought Jesus is too tired and too busy for children to be bothered by him, said the disciples. But they were very wrong because Jesus, he loved to, to be around these children. He loved their innocence. He loved their joyful spirits. So he loved to be around the children. So as soon as Jesus saw what the disciples had said about these children, he was very displeased. He said, let the children come to me. Do not send them away, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Then Jesus took the children into his arms and put his hands on their heads, and he blessed them. Another time, the, the disciples came to Jesus with a question. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, they asked. The disciples were always worried who was important and who wasn't. Perhaps they thought Jesus... Um, with an important answer, he said, Peter, James, or John? But no, Jesus said something that surprised them. He pointed to a little child who was in the crowd, and the little child had came to him, and he had the child stand there where everyone could see the child. Then Jesus taught the disciples a very important lesson. He said, I tell you, that anyone who won't come to God as a little child will never be allowed into God's kingdom. He explained what he meant. Whosoever shall be humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest into the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> it knows knowing that once we're not good enough or smart enough to work things out our own way, that Jesus still loves and accepts us but wants us to think as though we're children. Only those who believe in Jesus will be the simple, humble, and trusting faith of a child can be members of the family of God. Jesus said, Whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. This shows us how much the Lord treasures the children who believe in him. You may think I am the only child I'm only a child now and it doesn't matter to God how I behave but it does Jesus is just as interested in the behavior of children as he is adults So um 
He watches everything that we do, and he is pleased when you do the right and displeased when you do wrong. Your actions matter very much to Jesus. Your desire is to please him. In his sight, you are just as valuable as an adult. Every day, you need to ask him to help you do things that are right so that he will be so impressed by you and and love you just the same. So, um, now, once there was a shepherd, in the next part of our story, once there was a shepherd who had 100 sheep under his care. The shepherd knew each sheep and called them each by their name. Every morning, the good shepherd took his flock out to the pasture to find some fresh green grass and some cool water. Sometimes the path was rough and rugged, so sometimes there were steep mountains that they would go over, but the sheep couldn't see very far ahead of them, and without someone to guide them, like the shepherd, they may get lost. But the shepherd knew the way, and he always went in front of the flock and led them. But lions and bears and other wild beasts had lurked around the bushes and among the trees, waiting to pounce out on the little lambs. It was it was easy for a lamb to fall into a deep hole or get off the path of the shepherd. If a wild animal such as a lion or a bear were to come, the shepherd would see him immediately, put a sharp stone in his slingshot, and let the stone fly straight for the lion's head to kill the lion. He protected his sheep. Sometimes a lion, sometimes a lamb continued to run into the woods. Each time the shepherd would call him back, and if the lion didn't come back, the shepherd would go and look for him. As this continued, the shepherd would take his rod and put it across the leg of the lamb, um, breaking the lamb's leg. So then the shepherd would bind the broken leg with splints and tenderly carry the lamb until the leg was healed. Though the lamb's leg was hurt, yet how good it felt for the lamb to be so close to his shepherd. The shepherd wanted to keep them all very close. That's what shepherds do. The lamb learned this lesson well, that he would not run away again after his leg had been healed. Bringing his sheep back to the pasture of a night, the good shepherd would count the sheep. They were supposed to be 100 sheep, but he found that there were only 99. So one was missing. The shepherd got the other sheep settled and safe, and he went out to find the lost sheep. Up the mountainside, the shepherd went, crawling against the cold, bitter night wind. The sharp thorns pricked and torn his hands and face, and he slipped and slid as a way over these treacherous rocks, calling the last name of the, the lost name of the sheep. As he drew near enough for the lost sheep to hear him, the lost sheep recognized his shepherd's voice. Bah, he said. The shepherd leaned over the huge rock and saw his lost sheep stuck fast in a thorn bush. How happy the shepherd was to find his lost sheep. In a gentle, soothing voice, the shepherd said, Don't cry, I'll get you out. In another moment, he had picked the lost sheep up out of the briars and thicket and tucked him under his arm and began to head home. The sheep, the sheep still shrivered with fear, but soon began to feel like himself again against the shepherd's warm body. So the sheep love the shepherd just like Jesus loves us. Even if we go off from Jesus and we lose sight, of being with him, he still goes after us just like the shepherd did his one sheep. So now, boys and girls, we are going to go ahead and move into our letters and sounds, which is our phonics. So we're going to start off with our special sounds. We've been reviewing these a lot in class. So what is this little girl doing? She's praying. That's right. She's saying her prayers just like we say them before our meals at school and after our pledges. So we're going to do our special sound of 
pr. So p and r, pr. And that's in her saying pr. So pr a. Remember our special sound of our y. So some words that we can use for this special sound is pre impress, pra improd, prop, pr in prune, pre in print, pre in praise. Very good, boys and girls. So our next special sound is grr. So that's kind of like what a line says, grr. <laughs> but we're going to use that in the word grin. So grr in grin. And our words to use with this special sound is grass, grip, grapes, green, gray, and grain. And we also have some words. If we were in class, I would have you all read these. But today, we're going to read them here with Miss Susan, so that's okay. Okay, so we have we have that special sound, that P and R. So, print, that grr, there's that grr, in greet, pry, in prize, grr, in gray, Per in pra and gr in groan. So there's our spelling words that we would, you guys may write these if you would like. So we've got print, greet, prize, pray, pra, and groan. Okay, so those are our words that have our special sounds that we've learned today. Next, we're going to go over our blend cards. So these are a lot like our special sound cards, but they actually have the little smile in them like we use for our one vowel words. Um, you K-5 students are very familiar with that. So we want to do pra in praise. And so that would be our one vowel, um, vowel right there, our short vowel. But when we turn over our card, it's our long vowel. So, pra in practice and prance. Next is pre. So, we got to make sure we say that e sound. E as in elephant. So, we've got pre as in preach and prefix. And for our long vowel, we would do pre as in precious present, and pretzel. We're going to do pre as in prize and private. So remember that I is like E in inchworm. Okay? But for our long sound, our I would be pre like an ice cream for our, our long sounding I. So, that's what that sign up here means. That's our long vowel sound. So, pre in print and principle. We also have pra as in probe and produce. And then we have our pra in problem and probably. So that O is extended out with that O, kind of like O and open. It's got a longer O sound. So now we've got pr as in prune and prudent. Now we have our long one, and it, it actually doesn't give a word for that. So pr. Pre, make sure we hold out our U sound, as in uniform. Next, we have our gra. So, gra as in grateful and grape. Next, we have for our long 
A sound, we have grand and grab. We have gre, as in grease and greed. We definitely don't want to be greedy. We want to be giving. Next, we have our gre, as in Greg. Now we have our gri, as in grime and grip. Now we have our long vowel sound, as in grill and grits. So if you notice, I extended out those long I sounds. Now we have gra, as in grown and grove. Make sure, boys and girls, when you're pronouncing your words, that you are saying your sounds correctly. Gr-own. Put that beginning, middle, and ending sound in that word, and that will help you with your reading skills. And for our long sound, we're going to use the word groggy. Groggy. Next is gr, as in gr grueling. So that's our short vowel. And for our long vowel, we're going to say grumble and grumpy. We don't want to do neither one of those things. Okay, boys and girls. So now we're going to move on into our letters and sounds. <clears throat> so this will be page 131. So yes, this does include some of the answers, but... <clears throat> So I'm going to move my phone away a little bit so you guys will know to do your own work. So for number one, you're going to see the little bear with the tambourine or the symbols, excuse me. And for number one, you're going to mark the vowels and read the words. Make sure that we read those words, okay? So if you remember for our one vowel words, we're going to mark that vowel with a smile you boys and girls know that very well, and we mark it with a smile because it's the what? That's right, the short sound. And then with our two vowels in a word, we're going to mark that first vowel with a line over top of that vowel, just a little line, and then you're going to cross out the next vowel. So, symbolizing that that first vowel with the line over it is a long vowel sound, and the next one is silent, okay? All right, so on number two, you are going to circle the word that will complete each sentence, okay? So you boys and girls are going to use your awesome reading skills to read these sentences, and you are going to circle which word would go into that sentence, okay? So that was page 131, and then we're going to continue to page 132, So, number three, it says circle the two pictures in each row that have the same vowel sound. So, remember, boys and girls, our vowels are, is these, our A for apple, E for elephant, I for inchworm, O for ostrich, and U for umbrella. So those would be our short vowels, boys and girls, our short vowel sounds. But then we also have our long vowel sounds, excuse me, A for acorn, E for eagle, I for ice cream, O for open, U for uniform. So we can definitely tell the difference of those sounds for our short sounds and our long vowel sounds. Okay? So, um, on number three, you are going to write the vowel on those lines that our curriculum has provided you. Um, so you will circle the two pictures in each row that have the same vowel. So if they both have, so um, say for on the first one, we have a flag, cake, and a bat. So what vowel do you hear in those three pictures that have the same vowel sound? 
and then you will write that vowel on those lines provided. So for number four, we are going to fill in the circle under the letter that completes each word. So you boys and girls are going to use your awesome sounding out skills to produce the sound of the first uh, beginning of the word and then just imagine in your mind, boys and girls, how you can insert one of those letters in that word and see which letter sounds correctly. For instance, the first one in the green oval is rain. So we're going to say that R for R, R ain, or R in. Which one makes sense, boys and girls? It would be our A, of course. R ain. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so that's how you will do those. You're going to fill in the little bubble of what will make a word. Remember, we want words that make sense, okay? So, R in, that's not, that doesn't make sense, does it? So, we want rain, okay? So, words that make sense, boys and girls, okay? So, next. We are going to move into our number skills, boys and girls. Okay, so we've been working on our number combinations. So here we are going to begin with our number combination. You all know exactly what these are. These are our combination cards. So we're still on addition. And I think it is tomorrow, yes, tomorrow we will begin the 6th edition family. Um, so we will be looking at that and learning about how to add the number 6 with different numbers. Um, so right here, this would be 4 plus 0. So boys and girls, remember, anything plus a 0 is that number. So this would be 4. Okay. So, 4 plus 0 equals 4. But if you flip the addition problem, 0 plus 4 equals 4. Okay. So, our next addition. So, this would be 1, 2, 3. I'm going to count my little dots here. So, 3 plus 1. So, you guys know what that is. 3 plus 1. Let's count our dots. 1, two, three, four. So three plus one is four. But you can easily flip the problem. Three plus one equals four, but one plus three also equals four. We're just changing these numbers here. That's all we're doing. So next we have our two plus two. So two plus two one, two, three, four. Two plus two equals four. Very good. So you can't flip that one, can you, boys and girls? Because twos, those are the same numbers. And next, we have our one, two, three, four, five dots plus zero. So we know what that one is, right? Anything plus zero is that number. So, 5 plus 0 equals 5. Then we can flip it. 0 plus 5 equals 5. Then we have our 4 plus 1. 4 plus 1 equals, yep, that's correct, 5. Then we can flip this one also. 4 plus 1 equals 5. Next. We have our three, one, two, three, plus two more. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. So three plus two equals, that's right, five. And we can also flip the problem again. Okay? Great job, boys and girls. So next, we are going to be reviewing our time. So we've been talking about half hour. Okay, so we would already know that this is 7 o'clock. We've learned a lot about o'clock. So that 7 has that shorthand on it, 
And what is that shorthand called? Our hand. Good job, boys and girls. Then we have our long hand. And what is that one called? Minute hand. Very good. So this would, of course, be seven o'clock. But here we're counting by fives. And remember, let's see, let me get my five chart very quickly. Hang on one moment. Okay, so if we count by fives, we're going to do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. We've got that big 100, zero, zero, 100. So, boys and girls, that's exactly what we do on our clock. So, we've got our hour hand, which is that little short hand, and our minute hand is what's going to do the work. That will be counting by fives. Our minute hand does the work here, not our hour hand, just the minute. So, we've got seven o'clock, but let's put it over here if you notice. If you notice my clock, it does have the fives on it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay? So say I put my long hour hand to right here, boys and girls. So if you notice, it's on the five to remind you 705. Okay? So that's how it would be written, 705. Next, we're going to put it on the 10. So that would be written our hour hand first, 7, 10. Next, 7, what would this be? Can anybody help me? 7, 15. Good job, boys and girls. 7, 15. Next, we have our 7, 20. 7.25, and if you notice that hour hand, it's moving just a little bit, and it will continue to move until it gets all the way to the next hour, which would be 8 o'clock. Okay, so next, we would put the minute hand right at, you guessed it, 7.30. So if you notice, we went in a pattern at 5.00. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, okay? So that's how we get the 730. We're just counting by fives, okay? Great job. So boys and girls, now we are going to go ahead and complete the page 94 in our number skills. So it's got the cute little teddy bears on it. A few of them's jumping rope. They're running. We've got that panda bear that we learned about from our China um, um, study with learning about China and social studies. So we've got cute little bears. They're drumming and using the triangle. All these bears look very active. <laughs> so you are you all will circle the one that com that comes next. Okay. So this is reviewing our patterns. Okay, we've talked a lot about patterns within class. So we've got the little bear for the first section. Jumping rope, two are running, one's jumping rope. And then what's the next one going to do? We've got one running. So you're going to circle the ones over here on the right side of your paper that will come next in that pattern, boys and girls. So next, we've got our koala, panda. And then looks like a black bear. Or no, he's gray. He's some type of bear. Then we've got our koala, panda, and then that gray bear. So you're going to circle over here which one would come next. Then next we have our two little drummer bears. Then we've got our bear playing the triangle. Two drummer bears. Which bear would come after the drumming bears? And you're going to circle that. 
And boys and girls, this will complete our lesson 115 for today. Um, parents, if you are concerned about how will our grade work, I recommend you keeping all assignments within their binders that you've been given. And then when we get back to school, hopefully soon, I will grade those. And also, I recommend um, you to only do one video along with the lessons that I teach and will post here on YouTube. Um, one per day, if possible. Um, because if you get them all done at once, your your child may become bored. Um, I've been instructed by Miss Leonard to only do phonics and math. And then, of course, our reading books at this time. Um, so, art and social studies. Um, I can send some activities for you all to have some sort of ideas. Um, Pinterest is filled with ideas for each of those. Um, activities you can do with your students. Um, YouTube has some really neat STEM activities and videos um, that would help just enhance your students' learning. Um, you may do these upon your own, um, but at this time I'm not allowed to assign actual art or social studies assignments, and I apologize. Um, those are some of my favorite subjects and definitely some of your favorite um, children's um, subjects. So, um, also for our reading in our reading books, we're going to do my blend book. I'm going to repeat that again. My blend book, page 40 through 41. And then we're going to do I do read our book two, pages 10 and 11. And then we're going to do I do read book three, pages seven and nine. Once again, I want to thank everyone for watching. Um, I appreciate you parents and grandparents that is helping your children during this time of every all this sickness going on. Everyone stay well. You kiddos, Miss Susan misses you guys, and I'm excited to get back to school. Have a great day, and I will tune back in tomorrow with your lesson 116.